Well, hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk Spoilers. First episode of Let's Talk Spoilers of 2018. I'm very excited, and today we're going to talk spoilers for Batman Gotham by Gaslight. Now, I hadn't heard uh, much about this Elseworlds story before uh, this movie came out, but I went and checked out. It's actually a very interesting story. It's set in a Victorian-era London, so that's like the late 19th century, and it has uh, Batman uh, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Jack the Ripper. And it's just a very interesting tale. Um, the movie, it was very well done. I rather enjoyed it. I think I gave it a 9. Uh, out of 10, you can check out my full review on the blog, uh, flixfrog.wordpress.com. Um, and it is slightly different. The movie is slightly different than the graphic novel. And the, I, we can just go over things that I really enjoyed. Bruce Greenwood is back as the voice of uh, Batman Bruce Wayne, and he does a terrific job. He, um... It's his third time uh, voicing Batman, I believe. Uh, he voiced Batman in uh, probably my favorite DC Animated Universe original movie, which is Batman Under the Red Hood. And he's also the voice of Batman in Young Justice, which is hands down the best DC animated uh, television show. Uh, but he's great. He has like this cool, calm, collected voice, uh, but yet is strong and powerful. Get off the street. Now! Um... Is probably the best uh, animated voice of Batman we've had since Kevin Conroy. I am vengeance. I am the knight. I am Batman. Uh, and that's just my personal opinion. That's what I think. Um, Jennifer Carpenter, she actually plays Selena Kyle in the movie. Uh, and just for those who don't know, this will contain spoilers. Uh, that's why it's called Let's Talk Spoilers. But uh, Jennifer Carpenter uh, from Dexter, uh, she portrays Selena Kyle. She does not become Catwoman in this movie, but she does have a whip. Very nice. They allude to her past with lion taming. And she's actually from Europe, I believe, and ended up immigrating to America. But that's why she loves cats. Like, she doesn't really... Besides them talking about how much she loved those lions when she was young, when she was a lion tamer in the circus or whatever, she has no other connection with cats in this film. Other than that, she's Selena Kyle, and we know in the main continuity, Selena Kyle is Catwoman. But uh, she, she does a great job, and I rather enjoy her voice. She's like uh, seductive and sexy, yet strong and fierce. Um, make, makes for a great character, has great chemistry with a... Uh, Bruce Greenwood, so when you see Bruce Wayne and Selena Kyle together, it's, it's just, it makes the story that much better. Now the story is, like I said before, different from the graphic novel. They add in more characters from main continuity to, you know, just make this Gotham feel more at home and more familiar. Uh, Poison Ivy is in the movie. Uh, well, not, well, technically, yes and no, okay. Pamela Isley is in the movie. She's a former orphan, and uh, she kind of knows of Bruce Wayne, at least. Okay, let me backtrack. Before we're, stop, Poison Ivy. Stick that there. In this continuity, Bruce Wayne, you know, his parents were killed. And this is in the movie. His parents were killed, and at some point, you know, he gets... He doesn't go to the orphanage, I believe. He's still raised by Alfred, but the head nun... At the uh, orphanage, you know, she looks out for him, gives him advice, tells him things are going to be better. And Pamela Isley is another orphan who ended up at this orphanage at some point. And she grew up, and when she got out, unfortunately, she ends up becoming a stripper. So Poison Ivy is her stripper name. So, and that's how that works out. But sadly, she is in the film. She's the first victim of Jack the Ripper in London. She's brutally stabbed to death. It's quite awful, but... That was a nice night of seeing it. Oh, so here's Poison Ivy. Other characters they include, like I said, Selena Cobb for um, Harvey Dent has a bigger role in this than he did in the graphic novel. He was Bruce's best friend. And he doesn't go by Two-Face, uh, but they do joke. Uh, Selena Kyle knows him, and she jokes and calls him. Whenever he's drunk, he's like a totally different person, and he's very mean. 
and he's just like a regular Jacqueline Hyde, a little two-faced, so that was pretty interesting to see. <laughs> Batman's other sidekicks, his male sidekicks, uh, are seen. You got Dick Grayson, Jason Todd, and Tim Drake. They're these three little orphan boys who are running amok in the streets. Uh, they go by well, Jason, Dickie, and Tim. Uh, and it's a nice nod. They end up working for Alfred, and then eventually Alfred's like, yeah, you're pretty much going to adopt these boys because I say so. Which I thought was funny. It's like Bruce didn't agree to it. It's Alfred's just like, yeah, we're going to take these boys in. So in this world, you could possibly see in a future setting how these three kids will end up becoming his sidekicks as he continues to fight crime. Uh, but, you know, as we know, Jason Todd ends up becoming the Red Hood. And of all the three boys... Uh, he has the worst attitude. He does not like his position in life, and he thinks, you know, things... He deserves certain things that these richer characters have. Um, Dickie, he's clearly the leader. He's the eldest. Uh, he has more of a heart, more of a conscience. And Tim, he's just kind of going along for the ride with his uh, older friends. But the cool thing about Jason Todd is he has red hair. Uh, and as you know, he ends up becoming Red Hood in the main continuity, so I thought that was a nice uh, little Easter egg for the fans that they caught it. Other characters, Hugo Strange is in the story. Dr. Hugo Strange. The human organs can withstand velocities up to 35 miles per hour. Ride the wheel, and I give you my guarantee as a physician and surgeon. You will live. Since they didn't use Sigmund Freud, I think that's why they threw in him and... It's not that big of a role, but, you know, he, you can tell he knows who Batman is, which is, I thought was a great, also a nod. He's like, he goes up to Bruce Wayne at uh, this funeral they're at, and he's like, hey, tell Batman to meet me at my office at midnight or whatever. And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Just tell Batman to meet me at my office at midnight. I know a person who just asked could probably contact Batman. So, like, and Bruce is like, and he, it's not like he's going to rat him out. He just knows he's Batman. And... It's pretty great. It's pretty great. Just, I'm sorry I got lost there, but I was just thinking about how great. It almost reminded me of the Arkham games, how Hugo Strange and Batman was. So it was, it was, it was wonderful. Now, the story is different from the graphic novel. I know I've said this numerous times, but things that are different. There's no cameo from for the Joker in the graphic novel. Uh, Gordon tells Bruce when he comes home, yeah, Gotham's just gone to shit. There's this uh, one guy who murdered his wife and tried to kill himself with poison, but unfortunately the poison didn't work on him and now he's stuck with his permanent grin. Uh, that was the Joker. Uh, there's a Jacob Packer character who plays a really big part in the original graphic novel. He's like Bruce's father figure, uncle type character. He was friends with Thomas Wayne. Uh, and in the original story, uh, he is the one who turns out to be the Ripper because he was friends with Thomas Wayne, but he fell in love with Martha. And when he tried to tell Martha, hey, I love you, you should leave Thomas for me, she rebuffed him and she laughed at him. And it drove him crazy. So he starts killing all these women who look like Martha to make her stop. He even hired the assassin to kill Bruce's parents. Um, and it was just the, the assassin was supposed to kill Bruce as well, but failed. So, of course, that made Packer upset. So he comes back to Gotham to frame Bruce for these murders. Um... But that was all in the original graphic novel. In this film, since uh, Packer's not in it, they make a different character, uh, J, uh, Jack the Ripper. And it is a wonderful twist. Uh, bravo to them for that. You spend the whole film wondering, so who's it end up being? Because in the beginning, it's set up, you're like, we're going to find out who this is. They're going to make this a Batman character. And... Throughout most of the film, I really thought it was Harvey Dent as Two-Face. I thought, you can tell he's kind of jealous of Bruce, but not really. So I was thinking maybe he actually does have a split personality, and his split personality is Jack the Ripper. And the whole movie was leading to that. But the twist is, and here comes a major spoiler, so once again, this is Let's Talk Spoilers, so get out if you don't want to know. James Gordon is Jack the Ripper, which... Wow, that was crazy. And like the whole thing, Batman, you don't think it's Gordon at any point throughout the movie. And one reason makes it kind of a plot hole as to why you don't think so. It shouldn't have been in the movie, but I'll get to that in a bit. But Jack the Ripper is left-handed. He's a master surgeon. He's a trained fighter. He can brawl. Like he 
beat Batman's ass a couple times in the movie. Um, but Gordon is right-handed. And you find out when he's revealed that he was actually born left-handed, but he was an orphan as well. He was an orphan in London. He didn't go to the same orphanage that Bruce kind of spent time at. Uh, but he was an orphan in London, and as this is the late uh, 19th century, those nuns beat it out of him. Like, being left-handed was a sign of the uh, devil, so he wasn't allowed to be left-handed, so they beat it out of him, made him start using his right hand, so that's why predominantly he uses his right hand in his normal life. But when he's Jack the Ripper, he goes back to his left hand. Uh, and they kind of allude to that he's like kind of a split personality, but it's basically the nuns and the way they treated him when he was an orphan is what made him want to kill these women because he thinks the world is full of sin and it should be cleansed. Um, but at some point in the movie, Gordon is sleeping and he has a nightmare that Jack the Ripper kills his wife. And he's super sad. And he's like, no. I, and he checks. He wakes up to make sure she's not in bed. He wakes up. She's downstairs cooking breakfast. And he's like, Phew. I just thought the Ripper was taking you away from me. But when we find out later that he is the Ripper, it's like, why throw that in there? Why would he have that dream? Unless it was like a whole Two-Face thing. He's crazy and he doesn't want to be the Ripper. That would make sense. But he, like the whole, that whole dream makes no sense in the, in the story of the plot. So that's like a negative to me. That's probably what actually took it from a, um, well, that's part of the reason why it wasn't a 10. That's kind of why it's a 9. That dream makes no sense. Um, and there's like a part where like two, uh, Harvey Dent plays a big role in this movie. And there's some acid that uh, Gordon uses. Uh, and he burned his wife with it, which was awful and kind of made her crazy. But you suspect, oh no, here we go. There's this acid. Dent's going to show up and get and it's going to actually turn with Two-Face. That never happens. That was just, I was I was waiting for it to happen, but it just didn't uh, come through for me. Um, but later on, you know, he fights Batman. Uh, Batman captures him. He's about to take him in. He ends up killing himself. And then the movie just kind of ends. Like, Alpha comes, gets him and Selena out of there, takes him home and says, we're going to start a better future. And I was like, well, that's it. You kind it, it, it felt like there was at least five more minutes of epilogue that should have been on this film. I even waited until after the credits to see if there was some. There was nothing. And with it just ending like that, that plus the whole dream sequence took it to a nine for me. It didn't ruin the whole film, but I just wanted a better ending and to cut that dream sequence or to make Gordon, to give Gordon reason to be afraid of the Ripper. So that's what I thought about that. The overall story in the film, the animation was great. Uh, the direction by Sam Liu, I believe. Uh, he did a great job. Uh, James Krieg, great job with the writing. I really enjoy the dialogue in the film. Uh, he actually retweeted uh, my review of the film, so thank you again, Mr. Krieg, for that. Hope I'm saying your name right. Um, he actually took elements. Like, of course, he he took elements from a lot of the continuity of Batman. Like, in this uh, setting, Bat, uh, Bruce Wayne does not live at Wayne Manor. He lives in a cottage in town because he doesn't need all that space for himself, which is kind of like in the DC Cinematic Universe, uh, with Ben Affleck's Bruce Wayne, he doesn't stay in Wayne Manor. Wayne Manor's run down. He has a nice little house on the property near this lake, and that's where he stays. So that reminded me of that. His bat cave is actually in his attic. They allude to there's probably like another area in the house that he uses, uh, but we don't get to see where that is. But that was pretty great. And one of the things I really like about Batman in this movie is, like I said, it's alluded that he traveled the world but he's like a brawler. He's more like a boxer and a, just a good hand-to-hand -hand fighter. He doesn't know all this kung fu and all these other skills. Or if he does, it does not really show. Because he's a good brawler. He's a good fighter. He's not the best fighter, clearly, since Jack the Ripper was giving it to him. He's not the strongest fighter. But he's really smart. And that was just a great aspect of the movie as well. Uh, he just has a heart of gold. And he's just out to save Gotham. And gets his butt beat, which is a nice change of pace for Batman. It makes him a little more realistic. He comes out on top because of his brains and not always his brawn. So that, that was great. There's a sequel graphic novel called uh, Master of the Future, uh, Batman Master of the Future, with a sequel to Gotham by Gaslight. He actually takes elements from that as well. There's a whole, uh, the whole final fight with Jack the Ripper is at this fairground, which is supposed to like 
bring the city into the future and bring like a lot uh, more people to come stay in Gotham and it ends up catching fire. That's all from Master of the Future with a twist, like just that aspect of the story is from Master of the Future. Um, so mixing all that together just made for a great story. And the thing about Master of the Future, he didn't take too much from it, from that story. So like they can still make Master of the Future to an animated film. I would really love it if they did that. Uh, that story contains the villain Alexandre Leroy, or LaRue, I can't, I don't remember exactly what it is, but he's a villain in that, and he's pretty much, he thinks the future's gonna bring, like, a lot of technology that will destroy the planet, and in that sense, he's like Ra's al Ghul. So they can uh, make that story and replace him with uh, 19th century Ra's al Ghul, or just keep him as a villain, just throw in some other people just to make it more familiar like they did with this film. Um, but the, the shining part of this film, as with any DC animated original movie, the score, uh, the score was fantastic. Uh, Frederick Wideman, uh, he just did a great job. The music, the way it comes in and goes as the scenes change and as the characters are talking, it phenomenal. Mwah. I really enjoyed that. But nothing compared to the corruption of every painted camp follower. But yeah, overall, I really enjoyed the film. I The DC animated original movies I've always thought were great. They are way better than any of the Marvel animated movies. Um, I just hope they continue to make more. Like I said, I do want Master of the Future uh, to be animated to a film as well. Feel free, uh, if you want to read the review, go to my blog, flixfrog.wordpress.com. Uh, you can check out any of my other uh, videos on YouTube. Uh, we are, you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Google Plus. Um, I think the next, uh, spoiler, let's talk spoilers that we are going to do will be Black Panther. I'm so excited for that movie. So Black Panther will be coming at you in about two weeks. Uh, but thanks. Remember to subscribe and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Make sure you click the Flix Frog logo to subscribe and don't forget to check out our other awesome videos.